Okay, let's create some PHP code to act as an intermediary between our application and our database. I've got an empty document and a text editor, and you can use any text editor you like. Just go ahead and set up an empty uh, document and name it phonebook.php and save it somewhere where you can access it with a web browser, for example, any web folder. It could be a website, a server, a network, and so forth, because our application is going to need to be able to get at this script at runtime. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our opening and closing tags here for PHP and start with some code. First, let's set up some code to connect to the database. This will be code that we can reuse as we go through our uh, different functions, so we don't need to necessarily uh, connect for each different function. So the thing you need to do here is to name where your database is at, as well as your username and password. In this particular case, you would type your password here, your username here, and your database here. Our database is localhost. We're going to use root user and we have no password set up. Now this is just because our database here is going to be uninstalled at the end of this lesson. It's just for demo purposes. In your particular case you want to go ahead and create a username and a password for your database to protect it. Um, typically you're going to be using a website to do this, a database on your website. If you need to, just get a hold of your webmaster and, and they'll tell you what the username and password is. Okay, so we'll use a MySQL select database function now. Oops, there we go to select our database. In this particular case we named our database phone book so we'll type that in here and then just add that connection information. Okay so that's our information to connect to our database and we can reuse that throughout our different functions. We're going to need to create three different functions. One to get information from the database, one to add information to the database, and another to delete information from the database. So let's go ahead and start with our get action. So we'll say if action equals get and then we're going to execute this code if it is. So this means if we're calling that get action this is the code that will be executed. So let's go ahead and query our database here and the query that we'll set up is to select all from our table which is data and let's go ahead and order it by name so it'll be alphabetically sorted by name um, as we go through and then we'll set this into a value so we'll say result equals mysql query and then we're going to go ahead and pass that query and connection information here okay there we go so we've got that we've executed the query now all we need to do is manipulate that data and in this particular case we're going to set it up so that we have a string a comma delimited sort of string but we're going to use two two semicolons to delimit um, and that's going to be what we're going to use as a vessel to carry our information from our database to our application where we can sort of sort it out there so we're going to go ahead and set that up we use a mysql fetch function and we're going to run that on our result Okay, here we go. Now all we need to do is walk through this, uh, our values, and add them to a string. In this particular case, we'll set up a for each function to do that. So we'll say for each data as key value. And then as we walk through this, we're just going to go ahead and add that to a string. So let's call this string my data. That's kind of convenient. We'll use a concatenation operator here and we'll just simply tack the value onto that each time it goes through the loop. I'll add a delimiter there and we'll concatenate that on and that's it. Actually the last thing that we need to do here is we'll use a, a little um, incremental variable to keep track of how many items are getting added to our main string and we'll go ahead and tack that total on down here. So let's just clean up our curly braces and there we go. Down here we're going to go ahead and tack up this value to the front of our total. So we'll say echo and this is where we're passing our values out and that's going to be the total. So that's the count of how many items are in our list and we're adding it but using the concatenation uh, function or the concatenation operator rather to the front of our string. Okay so there we go. Now we've passed all the values from our database via this string which is delimited with the double semicolon um, back to our application. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our add function now. Actually, I'm going to comment this out. <coughs> so 
so that we can keep track of what we're doing. We'll call that create add function, or sorry, create get function. There we go. And we'll go down here and create our add function now. Now, what we're going to do is start off again with an if statement, but this particular case we're going to have multiple conditions. So we'll say if action equals add, first of all. So that criteria needs to be met. And then we're also going to add a couple things. And we'll say add and name does not equal, so that's the operator I'm using here. And then I'm just going to put in an empty value here. So we're just checking to make sure that our name and our number are not empty first. Uh, so I'll do the same thing for the number variable. So if name and number do not equal blank values, then, and we have this code here. So we'll go ahead and set up a query again. And in this particular case, we're going to use an insert query instead of a select. So we'll say insert into our table, which is named data. And then we'll set up our values. So our values that we're passing here in this particular case are going to be the name and the number. So we'll just type those in. Name and number. And it's going to set them into our database. We'll set up our query to execute here. And that's the end of our add function. Very simple. And the final function we need to set up is a function to delete values from our there we go from our database. So we'll create our delete function, and then we'll be able to call these as needed from our main application. So here we'll just use a simple if action equals delete, and then we'll put out our curly braces, put our code in here. And we're going to use a switch function. And this is something that's very cool. It's part of PHP. You can find out lots of information on this on Google. It's really super simple to work, or to use, rather. And we're going to put in our type variable here. Now, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to pass a value here, and we're going to check whether the user has selected a name or a number when they go to delete something. And that way, they can select either, and it'll delete just the same. So. We'll say in the case of the name being selected that we want to have our query <coughs> delete from the data table where our name equals the value that we've passed. In this particular case, we've called it ID. And then we want to do the opposite for the number. We've got to break our function here, our switch function, if that value has been met. And then we'll just say case number. And then in that particular case, we'll say query equals delete from data where number equals the value that was been passed, in this case, ID. OK. And that's very simple. We'll just put in our break. And there we go. So that's our switch statement. We've got our curly brace to exit that. Now all we need to do is execute that query, whichever query ends up coming out of that. So we're basically just toggling it uh, based upon whether the user has selected um, a name value or a number value. It's just a, a matter of convenience. And that's it. That's it for our, oops, I think I've got an extra curly brace here. There we go. That's better. And that's our code. We're ready to go. We've, we'll just go ahead and review this real quick. We've got some code here to connect to our database that we reuse throughout all our functions. And then in our get function here, you can see that we've checked to see if the action equals get. And if it does, we've, que we've queried our database here by selecting all the data from it. And then we've walked through the data here. And we've added that data onto a string. And we've added also the total of the entries there onto the front of the string. So for example, if there's 25 items, the first item in the string will be the number 25. Then we created an add function here. So it checks to make sure that the name and number variables are not empty and that the action equals add. And if so, it'll add those values into our database. And then we've created a delete function here. So in the case of the delete function, we've got um, a switch 
function that goes ahead and looks to see whether or not the user has selected a name or a number from the list box before pressing the delete button and toggles the query accordingly. So if they've selected a name, it's going to delete from the database where the name equals the, the value that we've passed. Or in the case of a number, it's going to delete where the number equals that value. Okay, So that's pretty self-explanatory stuff. And then, of course, here we've executed the query. And um, we can go ahead now to our main application and create our autoplay media studio functions that are going to go ahead and make use of this PHP script. Now, again, I'd like to em emphasize that if you're having trouble with the PHP code itself, for example, say you're not too sure what a switch function is, then uh, the, really the best place to go is to Google because it, it, there's just so many resources on PHP. And it's all free stuff easy to learn a lot of people out there are eager to help you but we're also eager to help you so if you want to uh, just come to our web forum at indigorose.com we'll also be happy to help you um, I'm happy to answer any PHP questions you might have there in the forum anytime okay so let's go ahead now and create our application function